would, in almost all cases, prefer to find a company that has 50 locations in one city or state rather than 50 or rather than 100 locations all across India. Now, why is that the case? Uh, for two reasons. One is that um, almost always local market density provides better economics. You can have a centralized kitchen, you can manage people better. If one store shuts down, you can move a, or you lose a store manager in one place, you can uh, double up from another place. So operationally and financially and managerially, um, you actually um, can get to better returns through local density. And, uh, and the second thing is it builds barriers to entry. So scalability um, is something that we look for. Now at Summit stage, you'd be looking for maybe um, a business that has done it in one city or maybe one state. Uh, when we are looking at it, we look at it as dominate a large number of cities or states, maybe a couple of countries and be going, going further on. Um, when you're coming to our stage of investment, what we often find is pretty interesting companies that have always had some insight to win large market share, but at some point in time, maybe are not operating at their optimal. Um, I think a couple of examples I'll give you is Domino's. When we bought Domino's globally in 1998, um, it was a company that had, you know, pizza wasn't new, uh, pizza in America wasn't new, but the fundamental insight that the, uh, the founder of Domino's had was people want their pizza really quickly and hot and they want it guaranteed. And so he came up with the 30 minutes, it's yours or free. And so he had that innovation, which was more than just pizza. People ordered Domino's because there was almost this game of can I get it free um, and I win-win. If it comes on time, I get it hot. If it comes late, I get it free. Um, if you take a look at Skylark in Japan, 3,000 locations, they basically innovated by being the first Western food brand in Japan. Now, in both cases, what we found was that the business had come to a stage where you had brought in professional management, it had grown, um, but over time, in some sense, that entrepreneur's um, passion, a little bit of that had been lost and operational inefficiency had crept in. And so now what we're able to provide with our platform is the ex expertise and experience from having looked at these restaurants across multiple geographies and to bring in the right people. But to what Sumit said, we are never drivers of the car. We can be navigators, we can be backseat drivers, but we are never drivers of the car. So um, it's very important when you think about investors that you recognize that investors are never actually going to run operations for you. They're never gonna run marketing. Um, if they do, then Hopefully it's for a very, very short period of time and it should be maybe at your request because you're desperate, but it, that should not, you should not be looking at a financial investor to be helping you run the business. Um, but coming back to you know, what we look for, so what we're looking for is businesses that um, are scalable, where there's some sort of an idea that's unique or different that creates some barriers to, to, to being copied um, Domino's, Western food in, in Japan, there's nothing rocket science about it. So why can't the next guy also come up with, you know, uh, with pizza? They can, which is why things like local market density or, or, um, or some sort of unique concept that you can brand are pretty critical. Um, so um, scalability, some sort of innov innovative idea, passion of the entrepreneur, and probably most importantly in this business, this is an operations business. You're not gonna get lots of white collar people leaving their Hindustan leave a job to come and join you. So there has to be that attention to detail which goes beyond the first and the second and the fifth and the seventh location to the 200th and the 500th. So that kind of operational intensity is, is pretty critical. Uh, what many of them have done is to believe that they've cracked it before they actually have. And so in many cases, what they've done is they've opened 10 locations of Italian, then 10 of Indian, then 10 of Chinese, then 10 of something else, with the belief that I've cracked each of these, now I've got a platform with five, six, seven different concepts, I'll scale all of them. It's practically impossible to do. It's very, very tough because you lose all your scale on purchasing, on management, on store interiors, fit outs, your back office kitchen, your centralized kitchen on sources, what, ha what have you, you lose all that scale. So, um, 
you know, I'll, I'll maybe add, add that as the last point, which is that, you know, as a sub-element of scalability, um, part of what we're looking for is we're looking for a concept that can get to massive scale without being distracted by lots of other things along the way. Because honestly, as an investor, what we're looking for is the opportunity that can get to a thousand locations, three thousand locations, not the one that can get to a hundred or, or fifty or uh, one hundred and fifty. Um, and um, you know, so it, it it's kind of the distinction between whether you want to run the business as a craft or you want to run it as a large scale operation. And there's nothing wrong with running it as a craft. Let me just be very clear on that. Not every business needs private equity and not every business should have private equity. There are plenty of businesses that, you know, don't need private equity. And, and you know, there's no reason why some businesses shouldn't be run for your passion and for your hobby. But when you come to the question of the kinds of, when you, when you look at the kinds of questions we will ask you and the reason we ask it, it's because we're looking for that massive scalability. Um, because otherwise it doesn't fit our uh, ability to, 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 to get our financial return. Mm -hmm.